James Hart uh, from Haida Gwaii. I'm a hereditary chief of uh, Songo Stostas, and I am also an artist. Uh, I guess I'd say uh, an extension of Charlie's fingers in a, in a sense, because he's my great great grandfather. Well, Charlie is Charles Inchon, and I call him Charlie, and I also call him Chinny Charlie, meaning Grandfather Charlie. Uh, Chinny Charlie was born uh, quite a way back, 1839, uh, pasted out so that, you know, he was learning how to carve then, uh, in his younger years, and uh, as he got a little older, I think he was like 22 or something when the smallpox hit, 1862, and he... Uh, witnessed a horrific time of losing everybody. Like they knew everybody and the villages were totally wiped out and there's a few survivors. And so they tried to carry on, but it was a lot different and it was about getting together and survival of all the different uh, village folks, uh, different clans. So things changed and they started sticking us on reservations and stuff like this and life started changing in a huge way. And but he carved and carved and carved, and I think a big part of that carving so heavily was it was a medicine too to help him get through all that stuff he was going through. He was a, a grandfather, um, a father, and uh, they produced a lot of kids, uh, but in the end, uh, only four sisters really survived, and they lived on to be elder folks uh, with their big families. And, uh, but Charlie, I heard stories about him when he was, when the, like my great uncle spoke about him, my great grandmother, my great aunts, and they spoke about him. And one of my great uncles was talking about when he was a small boy, he's about five years old, running around the house and that, and Charlie would be sitting there carving away. And he carved and he carved and he carved, and I'm told he carved every day. That's what he did. And so he was running around the house and he'd call him over, sit him on his lap, and he'd start carving with him on his lap. And uh, he did that a few times, you know, and, and he says, he was feeling bad because he said, oh, I was, I was too young, I wasn't interested, and I'd jump up and go play again. And he'd finally, uh, another time he'd call him back and sit him down again. And he did that a, a, a bunch of times trying to get his interest trying to get him focused on the work and get his interest. And he said, oh, I wasn't interested. And he said, I just kept wanting to play. And he said, gee, I, I sure wish I paid attention because I would be a good carver now. You know, <laughs> It was kind of funny to hear that story. One of the things he said in the past was uh, he wished he could leave his hands to us. But he had. And there's a lot of uh, descendants that are in the arts, weaving, doing uh, beautiful weaving and, and then carving. Um, involved in the carving world. And so it's nice to see that they're also carrying on with that integrity. Uh, so having it together, we had it together in Vancouver, BC, and uh, for our, it's more local to our area, and so that people can come and study and see them. And then now it's out here in the east at the National Art Gallery, so we're, we're the people out east can have a look, because it is worth coming to see and to study and uh, realize what was done. But the thing about this is done by, most of it's done by one man, right? You know, the, the weaving was done by his wife, but the painting was done by him. And so, and it's kind of the tip of the iceberg. Thank you.